Diaz walked into a convenience store after a late night study session. Little did he know that by entering the store, his life would change forever. Please welcome Mike Siegel and also his father. You met him earlier, Rabbi Jack Siegel from Beth Yashirin. Hi there. Another story of talk about believing in miracles. Uh, life was, was great. You were at UT. That's correct. Uh, Pre-med student? Hook em. Yes, hook em. Sister Mary Brendan, are you still here? No. <laughs> um, My daughter is uh, a freshman at USC. Um, that's okay, but uh, hook em. I believe. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so you walked into that convenience store that night, and yes. your then fiance or girlfriend was, girlfriend. was it, okay, girlfriend was out in the car waiting for you. Yes. And as, you're, as she had told me before, she said, you know, I, I was waiting and waiting, and then you just didn't come back out. What was Correct. happening in there? Well, unfortunately for me, the store was empty except for the three thieves. Uh, one of them told me to walk to the, uh, the back of the store, to the cooler. He pushed me down, chopped me in the back of the head, execution style. Left he thought I was dead. Uh, otherwise, he would have shot again and again. Yeah. And meanwhile, Sharon was beginning to worry what's taking Mike so long. She especially began to worry when she saw people leaving the store and I was not with them. So she immediately got out of the car and uh, entered the store so she saw uh, no one and nothing. Yeah. She, Left she, for dead, and then Rabbi, we talked about earlier the things that will bring you to your knees. When yes. you got the phone call. We got the phone call at about 1.30 in the morning, and the girl who called us from the hospital said to us, all I could tell you is what the neurosurgeon told us, that your son is in a very, 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 she said it three times, terrible condition, you better come out. I said, what happened to him? Meanwhile, my wife heard what happened. She was crying like anything. Tears were coming from her eyes like the Mississippi River. And she said, I don't know anything. The surgeon has walked away. But he said, you better come here quickly. And I told my wife, quickly, call Southwest Airlines and get an airplane to Austin. I want you to know there ain't no planes at 1.30 in the morning. morning. You have to wait till 6.30. So I said, Toby, let's get into the car and we'll drive there. And as we drove there, I think my heart was going 250 times a minute. I wasn't crying, but I said, what's happening over here? And the question that always comes up, it's 27 years, 28 years already, and still it gets to me. And I said to myself, why is this happening to us? This is yeah. what people say, the big question, why? Because often we think when we're believers, and you know, the, that, that What have I like done that that's wrong over here? This is the yeah. first thing that comes up to everybody all the time. I'll never forget that when we came to the emergency room in the hospital, all we saw was about a hundred youngsters from my synagogue, Michael's friends and things like that. And they were afraid to come up to speak to us. And then we saw the police came and they spoke to us and told us what they thought had happened. We saw the people from the, uh, from the ambulance and they told us, again, more positive thinking. They said, we've never had a case like this with such a wound that the victim actually survived. You can imagine what was happening. Yeah. And then, then to survive, but there's also oh. thrive. It was a journey for you. That's correct. But it, it, you had so many people who believed in you and you believed in yourself. And so what was that journey well, like? Well, not in the beginning. Yeah. Uh, I was uh, in a coma. Mm -hmm. I was, um, but um, then I became um, alive, but not positive. And then eventually I began uh, to uh, become positive. Um, I have a story in my CD um, uh, about my daughter, Sean. Uh, she taught you when, a lesson, didn't she? When she was four years old, she wanted to go to Astroworld, to the amusement park. I did not want to go. Uh, it was miserable. A hot, sticky summer day, but I looked into her big brown eyes and said, all right, Sean, Let's go. First ride, 45 minute line. I couldn't wait. Uh, it was miserable. Mm -hmm. But finally we got to the front of the line. The attendant faculty is in and said, Sir, I can tell you the way you walk. You're disabled. We had asked the world to have a policy for disabled guests. They get to go to the front of the line and they get to ride twice. Didn't think much of it. The attendant walks away. But Sean, a first four-year-old, smiled from ear to ear and screamed, Daddy, thank God you were shot. <laughs> from the mouths of babes, what, what can that's, we say? That's the 
title of the story. Yeah. Um, but she taught me a lesson that day. She taught me the importance of gratitude. Yeah, absolutely. And by the way, that girlfriend uh, back in 1981 is the one who's his wife today. Um, <laughs> He's holding up his finger. Amazing. You have encouraged so many people with your story, uh, especially in tough times. So many people are looking for prayers on their behalf, and that demand can be filled in so many different ways. There's a